Star Wars Jedi Survivor is coming soon. And I'm very excited to share some things that I don't know if these are leaks or official. Uh, definitely the key art is official. That has definitely been posted officially. So we do have the key art for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Of course, we got the trailer quite a while ago hinting at some things, but there's a few other things that did leak that I want to point out. And there's some things I want to look at in the key art that I think offer some cool details to what we could see from the game. So first things first, let's look at the key art. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that Cal definitely looks a little bit older, a little bit more battle hardened. Uh, he's got some scars on his face, a little bit of a beard going there. Interested to see what happened to cause the scars on his face. I don't know. I don't remember if this is maybe from the last battle in Fallen Order or if this is something else on his travels in the five years between games. As we know, this is set 10 years after the end of Revenge of the Sith. The first game was set five years after Revenge of the Sith. So this is taking place about the time of the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. That doesn't mean Obi-Wan's going to show up in the show. We didn't see him show up TV show. There's no crossover there, but it is in that time period. So the Empire is very much around, of course, Vader, everything like that. It's kind of the height of the reign of the dark side. Speaking of the dark side, if you look up in the clouds on the key art, you will see what appears to be some sort of a devastated planet. The leading theory on this right now is that it's Ilum during potentially some early excavation to turn it into a Starkiller base type of thing. Now that may sound far-fetched, but don't forget, way back in episode two of you know attack of the clones dooku had a little bit of a hologram of the death star and that would not be constructed for about 23 24 more years so it's conceivable that construction on something uh, that would be happening would it be like 40 ish years in the future especially something as massive as that converting an entire planet into essentially a mega death star i could see that maybe happening we did visit ilum and we could see some of the kyber mining going on it could also just just be more severe mining to help with the construction of the current Death Star. It could also be that. Regardless, leading theory is that this is Ilum after some sort of construction or some sort of disaster that's going on there, but it could also be any number of the many planets in the galaxy. Now you are also going to notice the Mantis in the background, the ship for Kalanis crew. I don't know if that's the pattern up on the, the top wing. I don't know if that's one of the paint patterns that you can equip in the game, or if there's some damage and some modifications to it, maybe some exposed metal. I would imagine with the sort of more battered, war-torn look of Cal's face and his sort of outfit. Maybe the Mantis has had some damage to it, given the adventures that they were on in Fallen Order. And of course, I'm sure the adventures uh, through the past five years doesn't mean it is. It could easily be paint. It could just be the way the design looks. It's hard to see from here, but it could really be either one of those. Regardless, it looks as beautiful as it always has. Now, I also want to compare the key art of Jedi Survivor to that of Fallen Order because I think there's a little bit of messaging going on. Of course, in Fallen Order, you see the crashed Republic starship in the background. Everything seems to be frozen, desolate. You see this huge divide between the light and the dark going on in the art. Uh, you even see that in the key art when you're loading the game on a console. You can see uh, there's this steep divide between the light in the dark, the dark of course taking the top because that's who's in charge right now and the light fighting from beneath. Now when you get to the Jedi Survivor one, it's a little bit different. Instead of this cold, desolate world where it seems like the past has sort of crashed and kept everyone stuck, at least that's an interpretation I take from Fallen Order's key art, you have a different one. There's a sunset going on. Now, what could the sunset mean? It could be the seeming drifting of the light as the Empire is even taking a further hold, but I do think it's a little bit more lively than the key art for Fallen Order. I think that's something to take away. I think there's, I think it's more so an aspect that there is a small spark of life, a small spark of hope for the rebellion for Cal and his mission. Speaking of his mission, who knows what kind of mission he's on here? It seems like we saw in the trailer, he's after maybe some sort of a clone of himself. Could be something going on. We know the Empire loves cloning people, so uh, could there be some strange experimentation happening with the Empire and what they're trying to do? Not only with Cal's DNA, but I would be terrified to see who else's DNA they have to try and clone. We could see. Uh, I'm very interested to see where that storyline goes, but the the artwork i think tells a little bit of a story of its own cal being much more front and center i think is also something to pay attention to i think it's definitely showing not only more confidence with cal and his abilities and the things that he's been through 
I think it's also showing that this might be more of a personal journey for him, as my theory, at least from the trailer, you can't tell 100% that it's a cow clone in the tank, but I think you can decently assume that's a cow clone. I think it's also going to show that this is more of a personal story. It's not just that he's trying to go on this grander journey from the force like in the first game, but I think this one's also going to have a little bit more of a personal aspect in terms of growth, not just trying to let the past be the past, but also to try and grow as a Jedi and as a leader and confront some of the tests that you need to to actually you know, go on to be a Jedi Knight and a Master and whatnot. So again, this is the key art. I could be taking tons of leaps and bounds here, but you know, I thought it was very interesting to look at. Now, some of the leaks also suggest that in addition to force abilities and new lightsaber fighting styles, you'll be able to master new equipment as you explore the galaxy in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now, what does this mean? Because I think there's a little bit more to unpack here than you think. New lightsaber fighting styles. It appears that Cal has his single lightsaber blade back. It doesn't look like it's a broken one, and it doesn't look like that there's a second emitter on the other side. Does that mean that we're going just single bladed and maybe there's some Ghost of Tsushima style stance changes? We know there's different forms of uh, lightsaber combat that the Jedi use, very much inspired by samurai. Would it be interesting to see some of that Ghost of Tsushima inspiration where you can change what your fighting style is depending on the enemy that you're facing? I think that could be something that would be intriguing to add to a Star Wars game. Does that mean we're going to get that? I don't know, but that's what it made me think of. And then mastering new equipment, that's where the uh, pre-order leaks come into play. So I'm going to put these up on screen. Now, you can of course see the cosmetics, whether it's the BD-1 skins or the Han Solo and Luke Skywalker skins or even the Kenobi skins. But the one thing you want to pay attention to is going to be the blaster kits. So it appears that Cal is going to be able to use a blaster and going back to the main concept art, you can see a blaster on his hip there as well. It seems like we're going to be able to have a mix of lightsaber and blaster combat. Now, how's that going to be implemented? Is it going to be something where it's not really a main thing in combat? Are you going to be able to use it in tandem with your lightsaber? I think that would be awesome to be able to use both. But as we know, Cal's going to want to stay concealed in certain places, obviously being hunted down. He already invaded Fortress Inquisitorius. Uh, he also fought Vader. I'm sure the Empire is very much after him. Oh, and by the way, he also killed a couple of Inquisitors, so you know, and he's also got another Jedi with him. I am positive the Empire is very much after him, so whipping out his lightsaber anytime he gets into a little bit of trouble, probably not the best idea. So I'm sure blaster combat will play a decent role, and hopefully it's pretty good, you know? I don't know if it's going to be some cover style blaster shooter, who knows. Um, that, that will be intriguing to see when gameplay does get shown off, and I'm very excited to see that. Hopefully at Gamescom or uh, the Game Awards, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of whack. Uh, I will be on vacation for that, so unfortunately I will not be able to cover it, but hopefully we'll see some interesting stuff there. But what I mean, because uh, I want to go back to the, the in tandem stuff. So remember in like Assassin's Creed 3 or Black Flag, where if you countered someone, you could also do the counter shoot. And so you'd like throw their swords off and then shoot them in the face or something. I don't mean let's change the combat system to that, but to have that tandem, you know, maybe there are some little finisher animations as we had in Fallen Order. Maybe you deflect electric baton that one of the stormtroopers is carrying and you shoot them in the chest or something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool just to have some neat little animations like that. I'm sure with puzzles, there will be some sort of tandem usage of the lightsaber and the blaster. That's just gonna fit perfectly into the gameplay. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of cool uses for it. I'm excited to see where all that goes and how they're going to work together. I'm also excited to see what new lightsaber combat changes come into play. Again, I doesn't seem like the dual blades are coming back. That's fine with me. I didn't use the dual blades all that much in the first game. I, I Aside from the combos where he'd separate them and, and use two, I, I didn't really do the Darth Maul style dual wielding. Not that it was bad, but if I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one fighting, I just didn't feel like I needed to use it. So I'm interested to see what it's like. I'm excited to see more 
I love this series, I love this franchise. If they put the same amount of care that they put into the first game, I think this game is going to do great respawn. I feel like they don't miss on anything, and I think this could be an awesome opportunity to see a great new entry into Star Wars gaming. It's been so long since we've had a lot of good Star Wars games, and it seems like this may be the start of getting quite a few new good ones. There's a lot of studios out there working on Star Wars games right now. So anyway, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave it a nice, thick and juicy like, and let me know down below. What do you looking forward to the most with Jedi Survivor. I, I can't wait to get my hands on it, and I will see you guys in the next video.